Hi, so this is a lesson on basic right hand position and technique. And this is for this is classicalguitar.com. I'm Brad. My head's cut off because I'm giving you a closer view of the hand. So, a couple of things on this video. I'm going to first show you from this perspective, as if you were watching a teacher in a lesson. And then next what I'm going to do is take my iPhone and do the same lesson, but from your perspective. So how you would see your right hand from your own eyes, from the player's point of view. So the first thing I want to do is just demonstrate how to use the hand in a natural way, which you already know how to do, actually. But the idea is this. You want a nice, comfortable arch, so don't force your wrist to go up like that or to down like this. Just a comfortable arch. And then you're going to move your fingers in towards the palm as if making a fist. When you, make, when you do that, the thumb comes around the outside of the fingers, and the fingers move in towards the palm. They don't move out like this. They don't do that. You use this upper knuckle, you bring the fingers in. So let's introduce the guitar into this. And all of, this, all of these angles will be more clear on the second part of this video where you see the player's perspective. You'll see more of the arch and things like that. So, when we bring the hand in here, we want to do the same thing. We want to move from this joint, moving the fingers in towards the palm, which means you can play the strings, you can play across the strings at an angle, not bend your wrist and then so you can play perpendicular. No, you can play the strings at an angle. towards the palm. So here's some do's and don'ts. Common problem for students is if I'm teaching a, um, a child, I call it the crab. So your, the wrist is down, this is all collapsed. It's the crab. So we really don't want that. So the problem with that is the wrist is too down, because if the wrist is down, how are you supposed to move the fingers into the palm? The strings are too in the way. You'll end up going like this. So you have to bring the wrist up, to a comfortable arch, and then bring the fingers in towards the palm. The thumb is on the outside of the fingers. If your guitar position is not correct, your thumb might automatically want to be somewhere else, or too far in one direction. But if it's balanced, I think for beginners you can just think of a 45 degree angle with the guitar. Um, and you can check out the other lessons on the site that talk about posture. But then the thumb will go on the outside of the fingers, never getting caught between them. You don't want traffic jams later on. So you want to engage that upper joint. Um, one thing that you can do is, is um, measure your starting point. So if I put my fingers on the strings, and then take this metronome, for example, and place it at the starting point where I'm touching the string here, if I move my fingers in towards the palm, they should, it shouldn't kick this out of the way. Do you see that? It's moving away from the metronome. Most students, what you'll find is that if you put something on the starting point, they'll go like this. They kick outward with their fingers, creating this, the crab as I said before, but the kind of locked, un awkward hand position like this. So we don't want that. A um, couple of other points on the difference between rest stroke and free stroke. So a free stroke is when you um, complete the pluck of the string by bypassing the other strings and moving the finger in towards the palm. Rest stroke is when you push the string inward and rest on the string below it. Now, notice that my hand position is not actually changing between free stroke and rest stroke. Lots of students, when they start to do rest strokes, they kind of end up going like this, extending their fingers because of the resistance. The resistance won't be much if, you're, if your knuckles are up. If they're collapsed like this, yeah, you'll want to kind of lay your hand out. 
But instead, just a nice relaxed breast stroke can be accomplished with the same hand position that you do for a free stroke. Very last thing, this is getting a little bit more intricate into technique and because this is just supposed to be a basic overview, but I'll discuss this briefly about whether any of these knuckles should collapse, particularly the tip knuckle, this little part of this last little part of the finger with this tip joint. Should that collapse or not? It's an important question because there are many teachers that say, yes, let it collapse when you play. And there are many that say, no, absolutely not. Do not let it collapse. Um, I, I'm in the middle of the road. So when, when I think of this, I think that at slower tempos, when I'm not trying to play too loud, yeah, I collapse my joint there. Just the tip joint, because I'm moving from this upper one, so I can't collapse any of these. But this tip joint does collapse. I don't know if you can see that from there, but it would collapse like that, rather than stay stiff like that. Um, I don't want to brace my finger to stop it from collapsing, so exert tension into my finger when I'm playing, um, especially in slow tempos. But to be honest with you, when I'm playing faster and I'm playing loud, because I'm trying to exert more weight, I do tense up the hand just a little tiny bit more. It's functional tension, it's not dysfunctional tension though, I would say. And I don't collapse that knuckle. So for me, the collapsing of the tip joint depends on what kind of texture I'm playing. But I think even in overall, I believe that if you have a relaxed hand, that joint will collapse and that is okay. Even at, if you're playing loud, or fast or slow. Um, I believe it's an okay thing to do. Other teachers will disagree and everyone has very good reasons for this so you can discuss it with your own teacher um, because this is really just an overview, a basic overview. So again, don't do that, do this, don't do this, the crowd, open up your hand, don't move your fingers away from the guitar like this or like this, but instead move your fingers in towards the palm. So, I'm going to change views now and show you all of the same stuff from the player's perspective. Okay, so we're back and this is from the same lesson but from the player's perspective. So from your eyes as if you were studying. So let's go over some of these concepts again. The first main concept is the fingers moving in towards the palm. So making a fist and allowing the thumb to go around the outside and the fingers to move around into the palm, moving mainly from the upper joint. So that looks like this. So some common problems. Um, we want a nice relaxed, relaxed arched wrist, like that. Not this, but like this. Not too far, that you can see the strain on my tendons there. Just a relaxed arched wrist. N no, yes, no, Yes. Also, we want some curvature in these fingers. We want to allow the fingers to move in towards the palm. So not this. As I said before, when I'm teaching kids, I sometimes see them go like this, which is like the crab. But instead, a relaxed arch to the wrist, and the fingers move in towards the palm. Yanking out like that, that's not natural, that doesn't look good, but just like this. The thumb also plays, but it goes around the outside of the fingers. Don't get caught doing this. Lots of students do this, or they even think that, oh, if I'm just doing it a little bit, it's okay, but it's not. You need this finger to be able to bypass the thumb. something besides open strings but I'm holding a camera. <laughs> so, not this, or 
or even if it looks good, but you're yanking the fingers up, not that, but that. So I'm mainly using free strokes. Can't really see it because of my thumb. Let's move it out of the way. But even when you're doing rest strokes, you do the same type of motion. And there's my collapsed tip joint. But even if you don't collapse this tip joint, you just move the fingers in towards the palm as you should. So no collapsing the, the wrist, no collapsing the knuckles. Don't put the thumb in there like that, but instead, as if you're making a fist, a relaxed fist, hopefully. So I hope that you found this useful. You can find more lessons at this is classical guitar, uh, dot com. So um, on the site, there's a number of reference videos and photos of posture, techniques, lots of pictures of these hand positions that you can use for reference. But that, that is kind of like the basics of how to hold the hand and some do's and some don'ts. Hope you enjoyed it.